If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, Adam, Justin, and I have a fun conversation for the first 40 minutes of this episode. 40 this time. Woo! Here's what we talk about in the intro. We talk about the changes on Facebook. Find out why Zuckerberg fucked all of his shareholders out of some money. Oh. Uh, we talk about the Twitter revelations. Are your dick pics safe on Twitter? You Be careful what those. you're tweeting. <laughs> then we talk about privacy and the dangers of government. Is Sal Chicken Little left unchecked? Sky is falling. Uh, and we talk about my cacao bliss moose. God I damn, actually that looks good. talk Ooh. about this dessert that I made with Delish. the Organifi Cacao Bliss. Now, Organifi is one of our sponsors. If you go to OrganifiShop.com and enter the code MINDPUMP without a space, you'll get a huge discount. We also talk about the benefits of your body running on ketones. Is it overrated? Ketones give you the bones. Ooh. Then we uh, doesn't sound right. I don't know. Then we talk about the importance <laughs> like of switching Another up. Mulligan. He's got a lot of mulligans. Yeah, like that's number two <laughs> of switching up your diet. Why is it important to switch up your diet? Sometimes we tell you in the intro. Then we get into the questions. The we first said so. question was: When we talk about eating keto-ish, what does that look like in a day? Like, what does Adam eat throughout the day? What do I eat throughout the day? And what about the pizzas and burgers Justin eats? It's a real word. What's the ish in my bish? (laughs) Then the the next question is, you beat me on that. Yeah. uh, We always talk about phasing training styles. What if somebody decided to do four weeks of only body weight training? Would you be a pussy? Is that a good idea? I did it for a year. Is it a bad (laughs) idea? How would we implement it? Go buy maps anywhere. Next question. What do we think is the most needed or what is the most lacking in the fitness industry? Pretty much more mind pump. Is it booty pics? No. Is it before and afters? No. Is it integrity? Find out in this episode. Final question. Uh, This individual is working with a client who's got low muscle mass and just really wants to improve their weak immune system. Should they be thrown into a hypertrophy-based program or should be they be thrown into a maximal strength yeah. CrossFit training program? <laughs> Probably sounds yeah. good. Find out if Justin recommends CrossFit. Yes. yes. The an- the answer sounds sounds obvious. Perfect fit. Because it is obvious. Also, this month we're giving away something extremely valuable. Oh, tell them, Sal. We have T-shirts. God, they're good. Made by Mind Pump. Let me tell you something about these T-shirts. I've gotten <laughs> messages from people who have increased their one rep max. Yeah. I had a guy who uh, fell off of his roof. The shirt protected him from any injury. I actually had somebody- I hope people don't try that out. (laughs) I had somebody else had a crush on a girl. She never paid attention to him. He put the shirt on. Of course, he had no pants or underwear on. She totally noticed him. He probably Might be because of the shirt. Now, check this out. All of that was bullshit, but you will get a free t-shirt if you enroll in any of our bundles. Now, our most popular bundle by far is our MAPS Super Bundle. What is that, you ask? Let me tell you. It's one year of exercise programming. I heard the mask. That means the entire year of 2018 and a little bit of 2019, because you're fucking waiting too long, is mapped out and planned out for you. all your workouts, all your exercises. They change every phase, lasts anywhere between two to four weeks, so it changes every single time. And then every two to four months, the, the entire program changes. It's super awesome. Videos, instructionals, basically everything you'll ever need to get into shape besides maybe some gym equipment. We're talking to you, procrastinator. Now, if you're interested in enrolling this program because you're awesome, the place to do it is mindpumpmedia.com. Man, you guys see uh, what's going on on Facebook right now, dude. Super, super interesting. This is going to flip... A lot of shit. I mean, it's going to piss off a lot of fucking people. I have personally met quite a few people that make a ton of money through Facebook advertising right now. Right. So mainly the companies are going to get pissed about this new... Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why you saw the huge drop in the stock. So you got to explain what happens, though. Uh, So Zuckerberg apparently came out and said that he is going to um, reduce the amount of ads and news 
in your news feed so that there's more room for your people for your, your friends, friends posts you can actually talk to these people well, well, well that's need- how it started remember yeah. when it, before advertising hit facebook everybody loved it because you could you know check out what all your friends were doing and when you popped open your feed you could see where dude i when i go on facebook i i i like to see what people say a little bit but i mostly go on because i belong to a lot of groups i like to see the news I use it like that, so I don't know if that's I'm necessarily. On, I'm a good- on. I'm on both sides there. Okay, so I. One of the things I I don't like about all the Facebook advertising in there, uh, like like it's been for the last like year or two, is I don't like if I don't actively go to my sister's page or my mom's page, they won't even pop up in any. This goes for Instagram too. They don't even pop up in my feed. So and I, real easily, I can get consumed with our business and what we're doing. And then all of a sudden, I'll notice I'll go to their page individually and see like, oh, shit, they've posted three or four things and I missed it and I didn't see it. And, you know, when it's family and really, really close friends of mine, sometimes I feel like, fuck, I wish I would have known that or that popped up so I could feel like I'm a, a, in, in interacting with their lives on a more regular basis. So I, as a consumer, I feel that's how I feel about that. Now, on the business side... You know, we are literally just now starting to make our way into Facebook advertising. (laughs) The ironic part. Yeah. So the irony of this is like, you know, there's also a side of me that's the angry business owner right now that says, fuck. But I also know- Well, it's a lesson. It's a learning lesson. It is. that you And, uh, you know, I posted an article on my Instagram for people to read that wanted to read deeper into this topic. And if you, man, if you're a business and you've leveraged that hard- on Facebook, fucking not very smart. I know. Counting per- on another company. We, this I, has always been all our your fear. eggs in one thing. Our fear of this, and this is why we're spread out all over all yeah. over so many platforms. Is you know, if YouTube all of a sudden shut down one day, this business is gonna have if, options. If man. podcasting shut down all of a sudden one day, we still have options. Like there's still. Well, I I, I know personally um, people who know other people who went from making, no joke, millions a year. Through straight straight through Facebook, through Facebook ads and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. went from making millions a year, and then Facebook changes because this is what they do overnight. They change the algorithm. Yeah, they change how they, you and know, like sh- just mastered it, bro. And then they just do overnight that. They upend you. Overnight would go from millions to yeah. like tens of thousands. Yeah, overnight, they have a lot of power. What they do, and this is true for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the social media platforms. They uh, they do some shady shit in that particular sense. Like if you have a political position or an opinion that isn't one that they necessarily like, you'll all of a sudden stop appearing in people's news feeds. And there's lots of evidence to prove this. Lots of stuff to show this. In fact, Twitter didn't Twitter just some guy come out. I think I shared it with you guys. Oh, all the oh, stuff. Yeah. No, just Did you some see that? Guy, a ton of people. Yeah, they had a ton of video and audio of employees for Twitter talking about how they they have at least 300 to 400 people dedicated to going through our private inboxes and DMs and 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 stuff and seeing what types of things that we're talking Shady. about so they can sell off those analytics so they yeah. can say oh these guys are the, the x percentage of people that are tweeting or tweeting these types of topics so they were just they were referencing no how often bar. they see dick pics and all kinds of crazy shit do you like, think i wonder if God, I don't know. You, I wonder if there's going to be a backlash to all social media because all the stuff that keeps coming out. Because I know for a fact that when you know you post certain things, on- I do and I don't because I think there's two sides or there's two types of people that feel this way, and I think we're we're probably all a little bit different on this. Like, I'm not the privacy thing for me. Yeah, you know, if if you're going to send your dick across uh, fucking the web like that. You're already rolling the dice as it is, and so I've already I've already told myself like whatever I put in there like it's not guaranteed just because it says it's going to be a private message or a DM. Yeah, I don't think they're. Like, I don't it, think it, they're would, it would change my patterns like just because I know that there's probably 300 guys at Twitter that might be looking at my private messages. I I don't have anything to hide that much. Well, think about it, it would this change way. my usage. Yeah. Think about it this way, because there's that, right? Some people are like, I don't want you to see my I private like messages. Enjoy it. But anyway, I understand somebody who does. Well, no, there's a lot of people like that. Like, I don't want you to see my private stuff, but that's not what I'm scared of. That I could give a shit about if some dude, some fucking dork in an office is jerking off to my pictures or whatever. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> Here's what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is... Let's say you are just unaware and you're sending information to friends, messages, memes, conversations. And let's be honest, in private, if if everything you ever said or did 
in private with friends was recorded. And then taken out of context. Even if it's not taken out of context, we say shit in private, we would never say in public. Everybody fucking does. If you're shaking your head and saying, no, you don't, you're full of shit. Everybody does. It's just human nature. Now imagine you, let's say you're some, you know, 27 year old kid and you're doing this. And then now you're 40 and you're fucking developed this incredible company. It's growing. It's competing now with the same social network. Mm. And they go back and they're like, let's fuck with this guy. Yeah. We've got all this shit on blackmail him. Blackmail is ass. Not just blackmail, release it. <clears throat> or let's say you run for political well, office. Or let's say you're a corporation. Or let's say you're okay, yeah, but any of that stuff. Let's talk about- That's the, some scary shit. Man, I don't, you know, what's the percentage? You know, what's the percentage of people that that would truly affect? And then, then I have a, a, the other side to that. So here's the way I look at it. Being somebody who- we are in the public eye, so I'm somebody who already gets, you know, scrutinized like that. I've always tried to be that person who's like, you know what, you're right, off air, or, but in my private DMs, you'll probably find some fucking dick pics, you'll probably find some racist shit, you'll probably find some sexist shit, because I find all that shit fucking funny, and that's and that's who I am, and I'm not afraid to admit that that's the person I am, but I, I feel that way, when you talk about sexist and racist stuff, I feel about my own race and my own sex, so it's not, I, I equally find all of it amusing yeah, 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 and that's, funny. That's you. And, right. right, but I think that's, I think it's going to force more people like us that are in the in mm-hmm. in the public eye will have to admit and talk and share about oh, yeah, those we, things. We or maybe. else, we, if you deny it or you act all perfect, and then it gets out there. Okay. Well, let me go back. Let me take. It, let me give you another example. This one I think you'll have an it has issue to be with. All the way across the board. Here's an issue that. I think you will have a problem with. Okay, tell me. You're going to make a business deal. You're talking in private with another person. Your competitor sees that shit, jumps on it, and you're fucked. Every possible scenario you can think of where someone has an advantage over you because they know private conversations you have with people will, can, and will happen because humans are on the other side of this and humans are not infallible. Humans are not these perfect altruistic, you know, fucking angels. They're, they're people. All this shit can happen well, and it will. That, when you, when you say that to me, it just, it just adds, adds a layer to the game or the business. Like it just adds another layer that you have to be cautious of. Some, it, that business has evolved for over the last hundred years. We've been doing business anyways. This would be just a new wrinkle in the whole process that, you know, if I'm talking business, let's say I'm sharing you know, like you're saying, let's use your example, but let's be more detailed about it where this could fuck me. Right. So let's say we're maybe we're talking about a business deal that we're about to do. We're going to acquire a company or we're about to take on a big sponsorship from somebody and we're sharing our analytics, our numbers and how much we're willing to spend or pay on something. And our competitor sees that or gets that information because it's it's someone made it public Mm -hmm. or whatever. And now they undercut us. Somehow we lose a deal over that. Well, shame on me for fucking giving something like that over Twitter. Like to me, like it's I, not just Twitter. It's, or, it's it's it's. I mean, we're or, we're, we're, or, or private Instagram and DM. I mean, if if I'm going to share information like that, yeah, I but gotta, it's not just social media. This is happening with well, your, and then things get hacked too. Like mm-hmm. you, you remember that yeah, you whole, can't you can't predict yeah, all dude. This, right? It's so, it's you guys remember that thing, that that one site that uh, everybody goes to like cheat and like adultery oh, site yeah. or whatever. Like that got hacked. Ashley Madison, and they, yeah, and, and exposed. Uh, you know, all these assholes on there, and it's like, what are you going to do, man? Yeah, no, it even gets hacked. I think there's two conversations. One conversation conversation is do we think it's uh that it that the pen that the ball is rolling and we should we can stop and reverse it that's a different conversation from the negative effects that are going to happen from it i personally don't think there's a way that we can reverse out of it i do think the market will provide some solutions for example bitcoin was a solution to being able to trace everything i do with my money um, Tor, what is it called, where you can go through these different servers? Hmm. That was an answer to you know people spying on you, and whatever. So I think there's going to be market solutions to where people really want to be private. I, I, exactly, I think hundred like percent. Whatever's monitoring that's what I, you, that's we'll what know I, about. I love yeah. where we're at right now. Yeah. I think that a, a company that probably doesn't even exist right now that that will be their that will be their pitch. We are 100% private. We guarantee our walls are protected. Nobody will hack us. Yeah. We, nobody will be sharing or looking oh, at your Oh, for DM. sure. Or you just be, it, yeah, you'd be notified right away. Somebody from Twitter is going through your shit. Like, you're going to know, you know, well, like that, all that No, stuff. no, for sure. For sure. I, I 100% think there's going to be market solutions for it. I do think this will and can, unless these, these, because Twitter stock fucking plummeted. Um, I do think that this, these kind of revelations are going to damage these social media networks, and it only takes one scary situation to do that. But the question you got to ask yourself, though, does a company like Twitter or Facebook 
get hurt more by the information like this coming out and maybe losing people when what they're doing by spying all this is they're providing analytics to companies that they can then turn around and convert Depends into dollars. How, so it's like, yeah. sure, we come out, this this people find out about this, our stock drops, we lose, you know, a few million or even a billion dollars or whatever, but we still now can use the all the analytics that we have. I think to it sell. depends. I think it depends on how people are. The, what I've noticed so far is that people don't give a shit. They pretend like they do, but they really don't. Like Here's the thing that I'm worried about more not. I, I don't care if private companies do that, especially when I know what I'm doing. So they're not like they're not searching things that they're not supposed to have access to. Like it would be scary if Twitter hacked my phone and went through my messages. Of course. But yeah. if I'm messaging through Twitter and they look through my shit and it's on their platform, okay, you know, I kind of expect it a little bit and or I'm not super scared because they can't throw me in jail, they can't kill me, they can't legislate against me. I'm scared when the government does it because the government can and will do all of those things. And we know for a fact there are laws that now say it is perfectly legal for the government to read your shit, search your shit, track you, uh, spy on you without any due process. It used to be the law used to be that if they wanted to do that, they had to go to a court, ask a judge, get due process. Now they can follow you. Now they can listen to you. Now they want... Now they do mass collection of all this data. Bottom line and is nobody the- really fucking cares, which is fu- which is really stupid. That's really dumb because if you have a, an opinion that is different, if you start to make some noise, if you whatever. And by the way, there's a lot of history to prove this. We just had Martin Luther King Day, right? It was the other day. He, uh, a lot of people don't know this. This is 100 percent true. This is not a uh, conspiracy theory. The FBI followed and spied on him for a long time. And they saw, they, they recorded him having affairs on his wife. Uh, he was an adulterer. And they black, they tried to blackmail him. They said, if you don't stop what you're doing, we're going to show everybody that you're cheating on your wife. They thought they had something on him. And little did they know he wasn't going to stop. Of course, he told his wife and that was terrible. But he, he, he kept doing what he was doing. FBI did this on multiple celebrities. And that was back when we had laws saying you can't really do this. So that's what really scares me is when the government does it. But private companies... You know, yeah, you do you take think, your own. Don't you life think in your things hands? like that? Like, I mean, and we're seeing it happen right now with uh, Hillary and and Trump, and they make creating that document that was Are fake you, just so they could so, so FBI could tap all hit Trump Tower and all that bullshit. I mean, things get exposed now. It's too hard to. I I, I don't fear the the government like that because I feel like we have enough people in place to get after that uh, right away. And, dude, if, and me, if, if you if if you if they don't like you. This is what they can do. I'm not saying that this is what they do do or whatever, but this is definitely what they can do because it's all, if you look up the uh, uh, NDAA, uh, National Defense Authorization Act, in that act, which uh, I believe has, they, you know, some people have really tried to oppose it in, in, uh, in Congress. Uh, Rand Paul is one of them. Justin Amash is another one. It says in there, and it's been extended. Did, fucking didn't several he just times. filibuster that? He, uh, he's talked about filibustering uh, warrantless uh, surveillance and all that stuff. But in NDAA, it literally says you can be uh, jailed indefinitely without due process. So not only can they spy on you, but wow. now they can take you your just ass, lock you up without any questions, throw you in a hole, not even tell your family, that is not tell fucked. anybody. And there is no due process, and this has been no, this has been law for, for for almost two decades now, um, all because and but see that's the thing people are aware of this nobody gives a shit because why I tell you what if you if you went to um, people don't, don't give a shit because people know that they fall in the ninety five percent no I think ninety five percent of the people will not be affected by trust something. me tr- trust me if there's ever no one, a situation no one gives a fuck about you or me yeah if there's ever no, a situation nobody, nobody's fucking throwing us in with no due process if dude. if there's ever a situation where people experience that kind of tyranny then they'll realize we have made a grave mistake but because nobody experiences it everything's cool that's what I mean nobody yeah, that's what shit. I'm saying yeah, that they, they not, because they don't they're the ninety five percent the five percent that this really clear present this really affects are the people that probably oppose it man i mean if you are in politics or if you are somebody that this could affect directly i'm sure i would be out there picketing and doing everything too because i'd be scared to death at this level and which is the majority i believe it doesn't really affect them as much and so that's not something that there's just no fear like uh another example is but uh, you're right if it start if they if i think I, I like to think that our, our government, as much as I'm not a fan of big government, is not like a big monster. 
and they're out to just uh, like well i hate to tell you dude but the evidence unfortunately is not in and it doesn't support uh that the evidence supports that we've experimented on this is all stuff by the way that's been confirmed so i'm i'm not even conspiracy theorizing anything i'm talking about actual com- confirmed shit that we've done we've infected you know black you know uh prisoners with syphilis just to see what would happen many of them died we've you know imprisoned people uh because we we felt like it we've um you know uh we've sold c- cocaine and drugs and crack uh to raise money to you know give to rebel groups and you know other countries that we don't like so that it's off the books we've sprayed poison into the air um and then come out and talked about it afterwards uh just to see what would happen we've done a lot of shit that's been actually confirmed and even apologized about even the tuskegee experiments we've you know our government came out and said hey sorry we did that um that's all confirmed shit so no the the record is not uh in favor of this you know awesome thing the record is actually in the opposite which is why it's extremely important we keep that shit in check like always always err on the side of yeah but the, some of the things that you just check. you just named off like how long ago did this happen are you talking about 20 30 years so ago so what well do you do you think it's getting worse or better i think i don't think it's getting worse uh well um, I, think, I could argue so I here's think, a, i think in, in injecting african american african american men inside prison with a with fucking syphilis is fucking crazy and i don't think that would ever get away no one would ever get away with that I today can't believe they got away with that right then. i definitely don't think the government could fund a huge operation last with, time it happened was 1972 co- yeah okay so over over 40 years ago bro so i don't don't think that that you, type that type of shit is ha- now. I think there's all kinds of fucking conspiracy yeah. theories, ser- theories that you subscribe to and that you love to read about. But I do not. I don't believe that it's of worse course, today than it was then. Of, of course, uh, of, of course, you, the access to information is so much greater now, which is is in our benefit, and also like you know, it's a different playing field. Here's now. the thing: it's scary to think yeah. about it. It's scary to admit it. So most people are like you, Adam. They want to be in a cloud of happiness and rainbows. And no, 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 it's so different back then. No way people would ever do anything like that now. But I guarantee you 40 years from today, we're going to look back and be like, holy fuck, there will always, they actually did that shit. There will always be corrupt people. There will always be evil That's in right. the world. Yeah. I will, That's I, right. It's the you reason why- to check it. It's That's why we'll always line. need right. some sort of a defense system. I, I agree. I agree yeah. that there will always be bad people. I'm not saying that, and I don't live in a world of just rainbows. But I do think I do have belief in our in humanity and that we're in a better place right now and that we've created things to help try and protect or stop those things. Now, does that mean it's going to stop it completely? No, I don't think you ever will will. But I definitely think being scared about those situations, that's chicken little. No, shit it's not me. about being that's scared. Fucking, oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. It's no, not it's about not. being scared. It's about uh being wise. And the wisdom is in uh, always limiting and checking those powers because you know what can happen if the wrong person gets their hands right, on the Right, I believe that. That's we, it. We, we so it's not a chicken little thing. It's literally do not give those things to anybody. To be scared of it is a chicken little thing, bro. No, uh, it's, so what you're saying is, it's because I'm not scared of any, because you're not scared, we should give the power to certain- No, no, you can't put a spin on it because I'm not scared. All of a sudden, I'm pro it. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that I don't think it's as scary as some people make it out to be. I don't think it. I I think that the the market that we're in right now, things will be put in place that will create to help protect those 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 situations. I, I, and think, I think we're always striving I for th- that. I do. I do think that uh, because of the internet uh, and uh, transparency, I think it's harder. I think that doesn't mean it won't change and they can't modify. I think definitely sitting at home with a tinfoil hat on and being scared is not a great way to live. But I do think it's wise to look at history and not fool ourselves and think that those same things can happen again today because we feel like all of a sudden there's, you know, people have changed and it's all, I think it's very smart. I don't know. I think when I move to Apple world in 10 years, I think I'll be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I subscribe to that theory still. I oh, think that, I think these monster companies are trying to build a, a better, uh, a better ecosystem for us. You know, I think that's really where we're, where we're heading and it's going to be interesting. And I know that we've kind of discussed this off air and, and I know your, your theory is like, well, if government will allow it. And so it's going to be interesting to see the next 10 years with some of these massive tech companies that 
are are literally growing to become more powerful than our government. It's going to be really right. fucking interesting to see what that looks like. But they like. also have motives of their own too, so you know, there's always that. I'm not afraid I'm not afraid of them as long as they don't ha- ever have the power to throw us in jail or, or write laws. Yeah, yeah. I don't then I'm fine. I'm because as long as I know They're going I have a for choice. that trillion dollars right now. That's yeah. their mission. If I know I have a choice and it's voluntary, then I don't care. You know what I'm saying? So Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, spying on your messages and all that shit. Well, if they can't hurt you with that stuff and if they can't uh, and if you have a choice, if you're choosing to use those things, then that then I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? It would be like it's like a private business who looks at if you walk into a private business, if I walk into a pri- private business and they look at me and they say Nah, man, you're you're uh, you're Italian. I don't want you in here. I don't like Italian people. I'm gonna be pissed off. I'm not gonna fucking like it. I'm probably gonna boycott you and make a big deal about it. But that doesn't scare me. Like uh, if the government did something like that, because they could lock me up, they could throw me in jail, they could legislate right. against me. Well, they have a whole and, military behind them. Too. Yeah, and they're private. That's like yours. Yeah. So so you know, Twitter is a private company. Theoretically. They own everything you do on there. Right. Um, you and sign that little waiver when you first sign up on it. Yeah, it's and like, you're volunteering. That nobody here. reads. Here's all my shit. That four pages. We own it now. The four pages like, of like literally whatever, is what it says. Yeah, it does. It says whatever Facebook con- too. content you put on there. It's for it's theirs. That's why I don't really get upset about something like this because I'm like, yeah. well, you're I know, handing it to them. Yeah, we we agreed to do that, and it's it is what it is. I you know. I think the moral of the story is for those that are out there that are that are creating businesses around social media is to be careful if you built a built a business that you rely on one of these third parties to sustain that business. That to me is what's probably really scary if I'm somebody who is, you know, built up this million followers on Instagram and that's like, I monetize that and that's the way I make oh, overnight all. you go to zero. Yeah, you that's you so I'd be scared to death, you know. And Amazon I, is another one, by the way. When we were talking to our our, our friend and Mike. Stuff, yeah, he was telling us how if if Amazon wants to, if they change something in algorithm, if they want to, if they penalize you for something, you go from selling you know tons of product to now nobody yeah. sees you when they go on Amazon to search your product. I think you just have to be conscious that whatever is written or posted, you know, on a social media thing will live forever. Like you just have to have that mentality going forward. Oh, yeah, right. right. If you're going to put that, that, if you're going to put it in there, that it doesn't matter. Like what? Yeah, you just have to be responsible and check yourself. And then, you know, obviously we need to <laughs> watch these fucking big companies and what everybody. doing. God, we were lucky to grow up in a time where none of our stupid we shit We have to worry about recorded. that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's totally I saw, different. Where was it? I saw, there was a, a Well, site. we're lucky we were before and we're during, right? So we, we, we understand it enough to use it to our benefit, right? To build a business around, right? Or use it to help catapult a business. But New opportunity, the there's another, you know, side to that. There's a darker side. Oh, so. There was this site, I don't remember what it was. It was this music festival and there was this site where people were taking pictures of, you know, kids were taking pictures of each other, doing crazy shit, throwing up because they're too drunk, making out with random people or whatever. And oh my God. I read this article how a lot of these kids got in trouble because of this. And I remember thinking to myself like, wow, that's there forever. Yeah, right. You know, you ripping your your top off and then puking everywhere. Like that, it's not that that shit didn't happen when we were kids. Yeah. That shit's been happening forever. Right. Just never got captured. Right. Think of all <laughs> Imagine this- if you're on the Girls Gone Wild uh, video, you know, and you're always on commercial, like you didn't even, like, you signed some waiver. Oh, there was there some forever. girl, that happened for oh, some Oh my God, sure. like I feel so bad for them. You know? <laughs> you're like, oh, I was just drunk and, Dude. you know. Like now I'm trying to get like a job. At think, this of, think of all the office. times you hung out with your buddies and you know shit went down or you someone did something stupid, and, and you're just like thank God nobody like that. There was no pictures or you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I think what it's gonna do. Is, I think it's just gonna show people that everybody has this dark side to them. I agree. Or, yeah, everybody's, everybody's I, I think flawed. I think exactly. That's yeah, why I'm. I okay. agree. That's okay. Why why I'm okay with admitting it because it's like I've never met anybody who doesn't got some fucking dark secret or some bullshit. Yeah, I've like, always said I don't trust the people that are like Ned Flanders. That walk around <laughs> yeah, really. I don't trust those really. motherfuckers. No, I agree, and because uh, I think now they can even I believe they can look up all your porn searches even. So imagine when that shit I know becomes, you're most worried about that one. Uh, no. you know <laughs> he always funny? brings that one up, dude. <laughs> well, you know, you know like, it gets really yeah. You know what's funny? I have zero, yeah. like I'm super, I have no problem. So uh, there's, n- there's nothing I'm ever afraid of, but I'm thinking about all the people. to me. I'm thinking about all the Donkey people shows. that will literally lose their shit with something like so that. So I never even, I never even looked at Pornhub until I met you. Like I yeah. never You're even, welcome. Yeah, so- <laughs> So Katrina and I you use my, now I'm obsessed. Did you yeah, use my yeah. affiliate code? No, I'm not on there. I'm not on there that much anymore. But I, you 
okay. know, I've, yeah. I have been on there because I'm fascinated by it, especially after talking to our marketing team and, and them being like, you know, watch what porn does. Porn's always on the cutting edge of how they market and they do things. And oh, pay yeah. Attention. Yeah. They experiment there first. Right. They do. It's like, uh, so w- watching uh, watching it like that, it's, it's pretty, I'm, I'm, and this is a dork in me, right? So I'm on a porn site, but I'm very fascinated by like the views on certain things. Like, like <laughs> the what? titles. Yeah. Yeah. Like the titles. And then they're like, <laughs> like holy it's so sh- outrageous. Right. There's like 40 million people that want to want to see a, one... a stepmother mother get fucked by their son-in-law like that's yeah, the, like, like, ew. Yeah, like i didn't you know <laughs> like, and then incest? i can't help but watch it yeah, you know what yeah. i'm saying I go, well let's see where this goes well, incest, <laughs> incest is trending right now well, oh. it's just it fascinates this me is the, you're the only probably the only dude looking at Pornhub is not joking <laughs> uh, you know let's look the analytics i feel kind of like a loser for that but you're I, throwing their shit off dude but, <laughs> yeah. i'm going around looking at all the titles and seeing what they're what what people are searching i'm just super fascinated yeah. by it yeah. no but it's totally uh shifting gears and off topic but i just was on your insta story this morning what was that uh whipped cream thing you made last oh, night oh dude Ooh, what was that super, yummy super, super, Cho- like a chocolate good. cocoa whip thing what did you do so I take a can of full fat. I've, I've done this before, but I've never done it with the uh, the Organifi Cacao Bliss because that shit. I is, know you mentioned it last time about mixing it in milk, so this is probably what gave so you this idea. So the Cacao Bliss is now becoming one of my favorite uh, Organifi products because it's fucking chocolate. It's got no sugar in it though, and it tastes incredible. And cacao has health benefits, and there's some other ingredients in there, so it's actually kind of a healthy treat that you can make with cacao bliss. So I've I made my kids chocolate milk with it, not literally just a scoop of it in chocolate and in milk, blend it and give it to them. They love it. And then one thing that I used to do in the past is I would take full fat coconut milk in the can. You have mm. to buy in the can because that's when you get the the real deal like fat from the coconut uh, milk. So I get that, I put it in the fridge so that it gets cold. And what happens naturally in the fridge is the rises the, the liquid separates from the 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 fat mm-hmm. and the fat gets kind of hard. I scoop out the fat and I throw that in like a blender. And then I add a little bit of the liquid that's left in the in the can. And it's usually guar gum or something else that gives it this kind of it's like guar this, gum. Doesn't that sound like a, yeah, that like a rock like, band? Yeah. Well, I was gonna see guar at a uh, warp tour. Oh, hopefully. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, so awesome. I pour some of that in there because otherwise it's way too thick. And I just add the cacao powder. You can add protein powder on top of it or fruit or what I do is I did the cacao powder and a little bit extra stevia. And then I blended it and it's really, really creamy, thick. It's it's not like ice cream. It's a different consistency. But it's like pure coconut fat with... It's like mousse or something? Kind of, yeah. but super, super creamy and thick it's not light just one serving of the Sounds cacao delicious one serving. one serving for no wait let me think if i did a full can i did two scoops uh, almost two scoops like one and a half scoops and um it's pure coconut fat so if you're keto or if you're looking for uh if you're keto or low carb and you want something that's gonna give you a lot of energy because coconut fat something like 60 percent medium chain triglycerides make that it's a lot of calories so so yeah. it's all fat so I made like three servings from it and it's a small amount is all you need. Like you eat a little bit of that and you're like, whoa, that was plenty. Super good though. Was it really good? It looked really good. Dude, it it's super, super good. So I'll probably be I'm having that, that yeah, a couple times this week now. Well, I'm trying to stay really, really low carb right now. So that'll be a great little, uh, and, I, and I have a sweet tooth. So doing stuff like that, I really enjoy tips like that whenever somebody Dude, shares with me. or I'll tell you, one of the benefits of switching your macros is- uh, just paying attention to the the benefits you get from different macro uh, you know breakdowns, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you, man, I haven't gone like really hardcore ketogenic in a long time um, because I felt like I was time to get out of it, need some carbs and all that stuff, and get some different benefits. Different feeling, of that. man, bro. Like uh, this is this is gonna sound funny, but um, I feel like my vision is better. Is it how? Really? Yeah. Wow. How weird is that? That's interesting. Like, I feel like uh, my vision is more clear. And mm. so I- I'm not sure if that's a thing. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. And not sure if it's because my <laughs> brain is operating better. I do feel more of a steady, smooth, focused energy from keto that's different. Is it um, true that, I mean, your brain operates a little more effectively off of ketones, or is it just that it, you're switching up, you know, the fuel source? It's a cleaner energy. Yeah. So. People with dementia and Alzheimer's whose brains uh, obviously- It's like running on Tecron. Have right? a tough time using energy. Um, 
when they put them on a ketogenic diet, um, this is a clinical application, will have an improvement in cognitive function. Mm -hmm. It's just a cleaner burning fuel. It's very clean. The mitochondria like using it doesn't create as much waste. Mm. Now the drawbacks are athletic performance. Uh, you know, you're not going to perform as great with explosive movements. Yeah. Um, it may be, there may be some negative, uh, issues if people have thyroid issues or other things. Um, I think over time, if you stay ketosis for straight too long, it's just simulating starvation for too long and you'll start to notice muscle wasting, which is what I'll notice if I stay on it for a long time. Mm. But uh, otherwise, man, going into it and getting that like focus feeling and stuff, it's pretty, it's in like anti inflammatory. It's pretty cool. I don't know. What are you noticing from it? Because you're still doing it, right, Adam? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually even looking up at what we have coming ahead on these questions. I'm like, oh, this is a perfect transition in the first question because it pertains to exactly what we're talking about right now. Mm. And I, you know, I am not. Uh, I'm not like following the the ketogenic diet to a diet diet or to a T. So it's something that when we when we say stuff like that, I feel like first of all, one, I hate that we name fucking diets like in that there are all these categories. It's like what I love is like learning about the things that when I change, especially when I drastically change the way I'm eating, is trying to connect the dots. You know, and every time is a learning experience with me. I notice. I'm really, you know, it's funny. You mentioned just on the show, I think on the last episode or two, you mentioned uh, talking about my sleep and uh, I wasn't even really paying attention to that. I, yeah. I was looking at all these other markers that I really wasn't even paying attention to if my sleep had improved. So I was actively kind of thinking about it last night before I went to bed and man, I'm, I'm falling right asleep for me and that's not normal. It's not normal yeah. for me to just, mm. cr and consistently, right? So it, it's not one night it's not two nights when i look back since i've gone keto or keto ish the last four or five nights um i've gotten incredible sleep i'm, I'm sleeping hard and yeah just from the fast i've noticed the same things as far as sleep is concerned and then also waking up I, like with energy again without coffee and i did i you know, before that, I was really having to, I had like a window of like five, 10 minutes, you know, and I'm like, I got to get my coffee and run mm -hmm. to get it. Uh, whereas now it's like, I could go and I've done this actually to kind of stretch it out a little bit more uh, to get my first cup of coffee till like, you know, hour, maybe, you know, hour now, and a half later. Is this because we are, we're getting into a sympathetic state at a faster rate and then also our blood sugar is probably low. I mean, I'm assuming if I'm going really low carbohydrate, all fat, that I'm probably j jumping into a sympathetic uh, state much easier. And then I'm probably also lower blood sugar. And I would think the two of those probably are what's contributing the most to um, the, the, the deep, quick sleep. You know, it could be balancing out uh, how your cortisol response is happening. It could be the reduction in inflammation. It could be a lot of different things. I can see why eating this way, why some people get so you know, religious about it yeah. because if you're somebody that does well on a ketogenic diet, when you switch over, when that process happens where it's substantial, when you yeah, switch, when yeah. that process happens where, you know, my body now is switching from, you know, cause that can, that can kind of be rough for some people, but if you're somebody that benefits from it, it can feel like a miracle. It can mm -hmm. feel like, wow, I'm a completely different person. Now here's what I've noticed. And I am somebody who does very well eating this way. What I noticed is when I did it for a long time when I stayed on it for too long, I started the benefits I, start to diminish. I I, st I started identifying that my body yeah. needed a change, and that I noticed that too. That's the important thing to understand here because yep. what works for your body now is not get a hundred percent not guaranteed to work for your body mm -hmm. tomorrow. It's just the way it works. Things change. Your body adapts. Um, you know, your body may develop new intolerances. You may have different requirements. Well, this is how I feel about the fasting. Mm -hmm. This is how I feel. I feel like the people that, oh, you know, that want to say they fast and they fast almost every day. They do like a 17 hour like fast every single day. I think that after you've been doing that for a certain amount of time, and I don't know what that is, and I'm sure that it's different for every single human being. Yeah, for sure. But I do believe that at one point, your body gets really efficient at eating that way, and then the, the major health benefits that you probably got the first time you did yeah. it are nowhere near the same as what you are now. And so I, I would argue that it's probably more beneficial to eat on a more regular basis and then intermittently throw in these 24 or 48 hour fast to really shock. I'm, I'm going to have to really, yeah, I I'm really like agree. using it 
as a disruptor, you know, mm-hmm. to, to kind of come in and then uh, challenge challenge me basically to kind of stretch, um, you know, my metabolic uh, efficiency and like make sure that like, OK, now I'm going to run on a different uh, uh, process here. And so this is like kind of that 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 moment where now I can recalibrate and I can focus, you know, on something else and then come back. And, and eventually I end up doing a similar routine down the road. But it's like, you know, this is a great way to interrupt that. You know what? I completely agree because even if we even if we're uh, looking at, under the context of evolution, which a lot of this, right, a lot of that backs up a lot of the why fasting is you know good for us and why eating a particular way is good for us because our bodies evolved that way, uh, or at least we believe that for the most part. It makes sense that if we were fasting uh, as you know people through evolution, we weren't fasting every day. To a particular, like it wasn't like we didn't eat till 3 p.m. every day. Yeah. What was probably more likely was we had food and we ate it whenever we wanted to. And then, oh fuck, we have no food. You know, so we're going to have to go without food for a few days or yeah. whatever. And that happened intermittently in that particular sense, not, not necessarily super scheduled or whatever. So I have to agree. I think I've done intermittent fasting on a regular basis where I, you know, every day I don't eat until. Yeah, you know, two o'clock or, or or until six or seven p.m. I used to do it till six or seven p.m. every day, mm-hmm. and I got great benefits. And then I started to notice they trail off. Yeah. Well, I started to notice some negative actually, yeah, almost yeah. like I was burning myself out. Like I was too much of a sympathetic. I did the same thing. Response all day long, and recently we just did the. I, I you know I just did the seventy-two hour fast. Amazing. I feel fucking amazing from it. And so I'm just gonna. I think what I'm gonna do is kind of listen to my body. Sometimes not eat during the day. Sometimes eat during the day. You know, sometimes keto this and that. It, but I'm going to use utilize these longer fasts, not r- regularly, but semi regularly, where I throw them in every once in a while. Because I'll tell you what, dude, my I, how's your digestion after your fast? Oh, after amazing! Your long fast? And my poops are awesome. Fucking ridiculous, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get like excited, and yeah. and I, and it re uh, recalibrates my hunger. Yeah, like I don't crave anything that you know I, I it's easy it's almost like it's making it makes everything easy and i hate to say that because i know people listening are gonna be like oh cool i want to start off my diet with a fast like i don't think you should use it that way i'm just observing yeah. how i feel and i do feel like you know you could put foods in front of me right now and it's not it's so much easier to resist and i know it's the fast i know it's because i fasted for 72 hours we put reserves on all this stuff all the time but it's like if you have a healthy relationship with food to begin with that's where we start right mm-hmm. we, we've Whatever we can do to build you to that point where you look at food in a healthy way, now we have the opportunity to do some experimenting. And yeah. this is just like one of those things. You self experiment and you, you do it in a in a measured way and you, you know, use it like that. And totally. Use it for the health benefits. Totally. Adam, are you gonna go until you feel like you need to change or do you have a schedule? No, yeah, no, that's exactly what I'll do. I have no set date like when I will transition in or out or what I plan to do right now. I'm just I'm kinda what I'm enjoying is I, I notice this that every time I either go keto or I diet really hard <clears throat> is I notice that my body all of a sudden, I, like I'm thinking about salads and fruits and vegetables like that. I don't get that normally. Like that, I don't have these days where I'm like, God, you know, what? I can't wait to get home and just have a big old thing of Brussels sprouts or I just mm-hmm. can't wait to have a mm-hmm. bowl of berries, you know, like those things. I don't normally desire those things until I actually fast or go on a restricted diet like, we j- what, like we're kind of on right now. And I love that. I love that. And it's similar to what you're saying where. You know, if someone threw like a, you know, a burger or a food that maybe I would really like uh, on a regular, but right now I like that would, uh, it makes my stomach uneasy just thinking about Isn't it. Weird? And I, what sounds yeah. really good is something light and easy that my body would really enjoy. I, I feel that way right now. And I'm, what my goal is to try and keep that feeling for as long as mm-hmm. I can. So I've been, I mean, I've been really low calorie yesterday. You know, we had, what do we have for, oh, she brought me the, Katrina brought me the eggs, bacon, and avocado for breakfast and then all i had for dinner was um bison sweet potato and and, uh green beans and i had a very small four to six ounce serving of uh, sweet potato on with the with the bison what are you keeping your your, your, what are your carbs roughly at i know you don't there's no targets but you're you're under 100 oh absolutely yeah and i'm under 100 i'm probably even under 50 uh right now on some days so but i can also tell too i'm a little tired so i know i'm i'm underfed i can feel that but oh, I'm not, just because the calories yeah but i'm not moving you know so that's what i'm i'm like i know i'm stepping less than 2,000 steps a day this thing is killing me right now 
So I have I can't go for a walk. I can't do anything with this boot because it, the walk is killing my back because it's shifting my hips. How is your pain in your yeah. foot since doing this? Did it affect that at all? What do you mean? Your, like? your, your Achilles. Did the pain go down from the fast in the keto? God, you know what? It's hard. I, I would. I know hate, it's healing the whole time. So I would hate. To- yeah, I would hate to draw that conclusion. I 100 feel better right now, but and the inflammation is down also. But I'm also two week over two weeks now, it's three hard, three hard. weeks into this injury, mm-hmm. and and I've been in a boot now for mm-hmm. over a week. So I probably attribute more of that to to that being protected mm-hmm. like I am now. That or, I mean, I so at nighttime sometimes I'll I I mean I take it off and I know the doctor wouldn't be happy to hear this, but I take it off and I got to kind of hobble to the bathroom like in the middle of the night. I'm not gonna fucking strap the boot up at three o'clock three times, right? And it doesn't take much of me walking around on it for it to start to swell up again. And so it's definitely there's a lot of damage still there that I'm dealing with, and I know that the boot protects it more than anything right now. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't try and draw that correlation without being able to study that better. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Interesting. Like, right. Doug, bring, bring on the bird. Today's Quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quad. Our first question is from literally Annika. When you guys talk about eating keto-ish, what would a day of eating look like for each of you? Yeah, this is a good question right now, especially, right? Right, Right, because what we're in. I mean, that was what I was explaining, right? That this was a great transition to this question because we're on that right now. We're talking about that right now. Uh, And you you probably just got your answer from what Sal asked me. I'm more like paleo-ish. Yeah, yeah. Paleo, that's, where, that's where I'm at. Yeah. You're, yeah. Um, so, all right, I'll tell you, yesterday was a higher calorie day for me. Um, just happened to be that way. In the morning, I had um, a very small portion of lamb. So, you know, we like to make lamb chops. So I had one, I don't know what it's called, one chop, one, you know, the little drumstick looking thing. Mm. So I ate one of those and I ate uh, four egg yolks. Mm. And I ate a small bowl of uh, broccoli that we had baked the night before. Then um, later on in the day, I had probably, I would say maybe a, maybe two ounces of macadamia nuts. I had a can of sardines. I had an avocado with olive oil on it. And I had some more bro- broccoli. And then for dinner, we had, my girlfriend made, Incredible dinner. She made ratatouille. You guys ever have ratatouille? Ratatouille. So it's like this vegetable soup. I mean, I watched the movie. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's I've never had it before. Oh, yeah. Really fucking it good. It looks good. Really good. There's eggplant and zucchini and tomato in there. Mm. Uh, so I had a bowl of ratatouille. I had uh, string beans with pecans. Then she took um, sole, so uh, type of fish, mm-hmm. and she breaded it with coconut flour. Um, and then in a pan with butter, kind of cooked it in a pan with butter and put this like butter lemon sauce on it, whatever. So I had fish. And uh, then later on after that, I had the coconut, uh, you know, fat dessert that you were talking about that we talked about earlier with the cacao bliss. Today um, is probably going to be a lower calorie day. And all I've had this morning was I had my Chimera coffee and I put a tablespoon of uh, coconut oil, a tablespoon of butter in it. And I put the, again, the Organifi Cacao Bliss in there. And I'm probably not going to eat again till probably 3 p.m. And at 3, I'm, again, uh, likely going to have some, we have lamb that's left over. So I'll have some lamb. I'll have some some string beans. And then not sure what I'll have for dinner. But that's kind of what how it follows for me is where I tend to prioritize fat. Um, I'll make sure to eat at least 100 grams of protein, although I'm not necessarily counting it's prob it's definitely a hundred to I'd say a hundred probably averaging between a hundred to hundred and thirty grams a day, <laughs> and then carbohydrates whatever I get in the in the in the uh, in the form of uh, vegetables, and it's usually non starchy uh, vegetables. So I'm not going to have any potato or anything like that. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? 
So, like, let's see, yesterday I had a spinach salad with uh, olive oil and, like, a balsamic with um, chicken, and I also had it with, uh, like, goat cheese, and so, and and walnuts, or, yeah, are those walnuts? Yeah, those walnuts. <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know. There's a couple <laughs> different kinds of, of nuts that I'll use occasionally just to throw that in there. Um, and then for for dinner, we had this, this cool dish that Courtney... Uh, is getting a lot of her recipes from more of like these like paleo kind of options. And so we used um, some cauliflower uh, rice. And so we used that in a bowl um, with uh, shredded chicken. And she actually put like guacamole on top with like this kind of a red like tomato onion uh, sort of medley that, that made it taste somewhat kind of mexican but it was oh, just mediterranean it sounds like yeah or is that okay i have Dude, no idea rice but it was, re- it was really good right. and uh, rice cauliflower had a amazing. healthy portion of that amazing. so yeah so i mean it's like i said it's kind of a little more on the uh are you like, paleo are you guys purposely avoiding like grains and wheat? yes okay that's our that's really our goal with this is uh, uh to kind of like steer in more in that direction what do you do with the kids do they eat that because that sounds delicious but it sounds like something a kid my would be oldest like, eh. does which is great he's like we you know we've <laughs> it's taken a long time but he's kind of come on board with the way that we eat my youngest is still like we make we actually did a cauliflower pizza with him he'll eat that and so mm-hmm. we'll add like pepperoni and you know cheese and like kind of like a regular kind of a standard pizza with him um but um and then we'll, <laughs> he'll eat carrots and in a uh, little bit of broccoli but uh you know that's about as far as we get with him uh but yeah my oldest he's he's very receptive to it which is great i think the the point of what, what why we use the word keto ish is that none of us subscribe to any one diet like of or a way of eating i think that's why yeah. when, when i reference we're following something keto. I say keto-ish because I think that people will recognize the types of foods that I'm eating probably fall mostly under keto, but I'm also not you know, following the the protocol for a keto diet where, oh God, I don't, I got to make sure I stay under 50 grams of carbs in case it kicks me out of ketosis for a minute. Like, no, I'm not really fucking worried about that. I'm, I'm more targeting really high fats of trying to avoid most carbs for the most part, especially starchy ones like Sal saying. And, but if, I mean, if Katrina made two meals tomorrow that both of them had sweet potato in it, like I'll eat it regardless if it puts me out of ketosis for fucking three hours. You know what I'm saying? I'm not hung up on that. I know. And I know my body digests that really well and it agrees with me really well. So what I'm trying to do is stay away from all the things that my body I know isn't good for my body, like the diet sodas or French fries or bullshit like that, that I know that I shouldn't have in there and I know it doesn't affect me well. So for me, it's more like that. And if how, it, how, Do you guys digest fats better than, uh, than let's say carbs or mm-hmm. doesn't you do? Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't know. I've, I felt, yeah, for me personally, like, yeah, I don't, I, I tended just to naturally steer kind of low carb, but like, yeah, I, I just, I feel better. The digestion more fats better? and protein. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because I know some, now here's the thing, by the way, with keto diet, I know a lot of people that, will try to eat that way and it and they can't it fucks up their digestion either you'll give somebody a bulletproof coffee or something that's high fat yeah, and it and gives them straight the, to the bathroom so it gives them the shit this yeah. is me if i go to extreme keto yeah so i i've yeah, already, that's what i was asking i've already figured this out that um you know my stomach is a little uneasy when i go really high especially where the fats come from so if i'm getting it from oils butter oh, yeah. uh sources like that not so well. I do fine with high fat meats, but that's still like a protein, sure. right? So, mm-hmm. but if it's a pure fat, I have to be very careful on how much I, I consume at one time. I do much better with a more paleo s type of yeah. strategy. I'm just staying. I, I just use keto ish. It's probably more paleo esque. I don't give a fuck about the name. I know. Right? You know what I'm, I like to call it the, I'm not even close to I keto. I like to call so. it Schaeferish, right? Schaeferish. It's, it's, you're eating Schaeferish, <laughs> right? I, the Schaefer way. I see. It's good to know that you need to identify that with yourself if you plan on eating a particular way because. I've gotten messages from people who are like, oh, I'm eating keto and either I can't poop and I haven't pooped for four days or I have upset stomach or I feel terrible. And it's like, yo, man, your body's telling you that like you're going too far, too hard. Yo. Back off of that. Now me, I'll use myself as an example. I've no joke. Okay. Here's for a hundred percent. Sometimes I'll make this. I'll make myself some coffee and in the coffee, I will put two tablespoons of coconut oil, one tablespoon of butter 
and one or two tablespoons of MCT oil. Oh, God. Oh, that would no. fuck my stomach You're slamming up. slamming that fat in there. You know what? I'm, I can, I'm on the toilet five minutes. Dude, I don't know if I can do that I much. can consume 100 grams of fats in a serving, no problem, yeah. no effect on my digestive system. I need system it paired with something. Whatsoever. Yeah. But that's me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, I've yeah. identified that meat. Now, if I eat 100 grams of carbs all at once- so depending on where they come from, that can destroy me. And 100 grams of carbs at once is not that much. No, it's not. That's not. But I, I've identified that in myself, and hmm. so it's important you know this. Yeah. See, so that, that, that can, agrees really well with me. Yeah. I could I could put down oh. easy, easily 80 to 100 grams of carbs, and especially if they're good, if they're coming from a good source. Like if it's a good source of carbohydrates for me, I've, my body totally agrees with that. No, if I push carbs all at once, which I've done before. <clears throat> I'm like, oh man, it kills me. And so my body seems to be uh, better at metabolizing or breaking down fats, but that's me. You know what I mean? So that's well, I think the important that's the, thing. I, it is the important thing. I think that's what people have to take away from this is that we're all so uniquely different. This is why I don't think anybody should subscribe to one diet yeah, just because that, and just because that one diet that you're following has shown you all these great results. Don't stop there. Don't stop there. Dive deeper into what it is. What is it about the diet that makes you feel this way and get closer to, to connecting those dots and you know build your own type and of don't a, marry it. Yes. Don't because at some point it's not going to feel good. It's not going to work for you, right. and then you're you're because you won't get sex anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Next question is from Alex Schwartz. We always talk about phasing training styles. Thoughts on four weeks of only body weight training? Awesome idea. Oh, can I yeah. tell you something right now? Awesome idea. Love doing that. I, I actually do we all don't time. talk enough about body weight training and its benefits. And again, it doesn't mean you should always train body weight. If you want to, that's fine too, because there's a lot of benefits from weights. But we talk about the benefits of weights a lot on the show. I think uh, a cycle of only body weight training, of practicing, you know, and here's the problem with body weight training. A lot of people think air squats, push ups, you know, pull ups, like they think the basic stuff. Yeah. Man, you get your hands on some dip bars. Some you know rings. Yeah. You practice. You can intensify. You it. practice handstands and stuff like that, and you get good at that kind of stuff Here's, over a four week period. Yeah. You are gonna be fucking solid and strong when you go back to the weights. Here's what I appreciate about uh, body weight training. I just appreciate the fact that like uh, what you can w when you when you are in the in the weight room and you're lifting weights. Like a lot of times you're not like super uh, responsive with like what your body's trying to communicate to you. So. Uh, I can't I can't listen all the time because I'm trying to move the weight. So you know, body weight training allows that opportunity to really like get in tune with you know how everything is is inner working, how you're feeling through like all these intricate movements, and it just uh, and like Sal said, you can intensify it. So it's not like you have like this weenie workout that you're working with. Like you can really do a lot with body weight training. To where you know you're building this this different type of a, of a, a strength that um, you know you're, you're you're it's more of that like sort of gymnastic like CNS type training kind of strength. Dude, it builds body great. it builds body awareness in a totally different way. Yeah, and it's it's also probably one of the easiest safest ways to figure out how you can or should be pushing yourself. Right, like I feel like the the challenge with some people, especially somebody who's a beginner into barbell lifting. Is you know I think the one of the most common questions I've ever been asked from clients when they just get started into it is well how much weight do I do or what how much should I push like what's hard what's not hard should I be struggling to get that up and like they just their form breaking down there's a lot more risk involved where learning how to control your own body weight is an incredible way one to start somebody so learning how to control that first like if you can control your body weight really well you're probably ready for you to start to progress by adding a, a bunch more weight on the barbell so i think it's great for that i also think it's a great way to cycle out of training with barbell so this is for the advanced like people deloading, yeah. yeah it's a great way to deload uh, a lot of times i'll do this when I just know I've been hammering the weights for a while. You know, I've it's I've been I've broke through a few plateaus and I've been just increasing my volume each time we month over month type of deal. And now I'm finally getting to that point where it's like, okay, I'm kind of maxed out. I'm working out five to seven days. I'm hitting these like long you're sessions. pressuring the hinges, right? You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like I get into that, and that's that's kind of my mentality. Like, okay, I feel like these like 
little signs that like these aches and pains that are starting to come out. That's where I like really uh, think about like, wow, maybe I should do, maybe I should go through a cycle of body weight training. And also what's so, so great about it is it fortifies <coughs> the joints. So now I can focus on really supporting the joints uh, better, which will then improve me going back to the weights. Yeah. The thing with uh, some of the challenges with body weight training is it's not as easily versatile as using uh, weights. You gotta be a little bit more creative. It can require more skill to do like a handstand push-up versus an overhead press uh, for a lot of people. Obviously getting upside down and balancing on your hands mm -hmm. can be hard. Um, it, you know, Machines are obviously very easy to use. You just get in there. So those are some of the challenges, but the positives are, I mean, I'll tell you, uh, I did body weight only training for a period of, it wasn't a whole long time, but it was about I want to say about three months. Justin did it for a year. I did it for a year. I, I know yeah. you did it for an entire. So I did it for about three months. I did it while I was training jujitsu, and uh, I just I don't I don't know what exactly motivated me to do this. I think I was reading old training, um, old fighter training. So when you read like the old judokas, the old wrestlers, um, boxers. Back in the day, everything they did was body weight. There wasn't any; they didn't use weights at all. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, this would be kind of cool to try this out. And so I started just doing body weight training. Now, here's what I noticed: I had a different kind of control over my body. Um, I felt very aware of my body in space, which came very much in handy <clears throat> in jujitsu. I felt strong and stable um, when I was in uh, positions or when I was gripping someone or when they were on top of me. Now you got here, prison strong. Yeah. Here well, here are the <laughs> here are the, the downsides. I, those butt cheeks. I did notice <laughs> that's, that's terrible. Hey man, I'm just you know that's prison strong. I'm saying the obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I that's what did, everybody was thinking. I did notice a reduction in um you know uh, maximal strength generation and power. I did notice some muscle loss from doing it. So I don't think you should just do one or just do the other. I think they have incredible benefits that you can that can oh, yeah. benefit each other. Absolutely. And you know, if you've been lifting weights for a long time, look, we have a program. We have Maps Anywhere is one of our programs that's included in our Super <coughs> Bundle, and I recommend everybody in between cycling one of the Maps programs. You know, if you so standard way that we typically recommend people follow the Maps programs is. MAPS Anabolic, and this is different from person to person, but generally we recommend you start with MAPS Anabolic, you go to MAPS Performance, you do MAPS Aesthetic, um, and then you cycle them. The, with the Super Bundle, what we really recommend, the best way I think to do it, is go MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Aesthetic, or MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, mm -hmm. depending on where you're at. Injecting that body weight only training in between your programs, tremendous benefits. Better than if you didn't uh, do that at all. It's, right. it's, it's a huge benefit. I want to hear now, Justin, you did it for a year. I did. Yeah. And so, and that, this was an experiment, self-experiment, um, where I had barbell trains forever. Like in, in, this was like coming off of years of intense barbell training for football and explosive type, uh, you know, power lifts and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I just had never really ventured into um, gymnastic style training or um, and somebody actually uh, I'm trying to forget when it was, but I think I, I, I was introduced to this gymnastic coach who actually kind of uh, changed my mind as far as like put me on some rings and then got me to do some rolls and um, uh, handstands and things like that. And so this is when CrossFit was just kind of surfacing. But um, the the emphasis, like he was actually teaching this to some of the CrossFit boxes at the time. Um, and so I just got interested in it and, and felt the, the effects of when I started just using the rings for dips. And then along comes TRX and along comes like a lot of these suspension trainers. And so I just was like, wow, I see... I see potential in a movement happening in this direction. And so for me in my business mind, I was thinking, wow, this will set me apart from other trainers because, you know, this is something kind of new wave. And, and uh, of course, you see how popular like TRX and all these things came in. And with, with 
um, you know, CrossFit, even at the time CrossFit, they didn't want to accept the gymnastic part of it because they were very much like, you know, like very macho and like competitive about, you know, d- destroying themselves. So they, they didn't want to put in the work because gymnastics requires a lot of skill, work and, and time. Practice. Right? Practice. So I realized that and the coach reiterated that to me about like the skill of each one of these movements. And so I just was like, wow, I'm going to have to take a lot of time with this. And so it just became this process of I'm learning, you know, how to get in a hollow body position. I'm learning how to, you know, get like skin the cat and do these types of moves where I'm going upside down and I'm stretching and I'm, I'm building range of motion I've never had before in my shoulder and, and being able to control you know, all this, this movement, um, and, and communicate that through my core all the way down to my toes. It was just enlightening to me and I, I enjoyed it. And so I just got further and further with it and to where I could do like muscle ups and stuff like that. Um, and, and but I didn't get, I didn't get to a point where I was trying to walk around on my hands and all that kind of stuff. I did like handstand push ups and, uh, I really tried to challenge myself and, and graduate my intensity with it, which there's a total protocol for that. So um, I, I really did end up enjoying the process, but then really missed the barbells, you, you know. And so I was like, okay, that was great, but then you know, let me come back to like my comfort zone. And coming back was like, holy shit! Like everything was so stable in my lifts. My my lifts, my mechanics were improved. You know, my shoulder pain I used to have uh, that was inevitable after going through like maybe a cycle or two um, just vanished. Wow. So it was great. Next question is from Lauren Bergman. What do you think is the most needed or is lacking in the fitness industry? Oh, Jesus. Integrity. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, nailed it. Easy. Uh, Integrity. You could, you could almost say that though in every industry, right? Well, yeah, but fuck, man. You, yeah, you're right. But fitness is just. I mean, I. It's hard. I don't want to compare it to under other, other industries because a lot of industries are fucked up. But when you have a situation where the majority of the information that you get from this industry that is informing you is false, there's a problem, and fitness. And you ask any trainer that's worth their their you know their salt. You ask anybody who's been in this industry for more than ten years. You ask any fitness coach who works with athletes. Ask them, you know, what percentage of the information that I get from muscle building websites, fat loss websites, magazines, media, you know, all the stuff that's sprayed out there. How much of it do you think is true? And how much of it do you think is just bullshit? And they'll they'll all most people will agree most of it is bullshit. Yeah. And that's the terrible thing <clears throat> about the fitness industry that I think needs to needs to change. I do see light at the end of the tunnel though. I do see Well, I believe I believe we represent that. I believe that, you know, what we need we need a bodybuilding.com that's not driven and motivated by supplements. And I really think that that will be our our you know our nemesis will be bodybuilding dot the type of traffic that they get you know for and they provide and they don't get me wrong they provide some good information They're, I mean they provide a ton of content uh, but I also think that it's it's heavily motivated by a, by supplement companies and the money they make through supplements and advertising I think that the the fitness industry really needs a place. I don't know if you guys saw the post I did last night with uh, the NBA TNT team, the the Kenny and Charles and yeah, Shaq, yeah, yeah, I right? Did, I did yeah. See and I asked people like it was really I got some great DMs of like who everyone thought each of us were, right? So oh, what they say? So most people uh, said Doug was Ernie, I was Chuck, you were Shaq, and he was Kenny. <laughs> Right. I don't know. I don't know any. I'm Shaq. Dude. Yeah. All so right. and and the the theory yeah. behind that is you know it, those that know that understand That's those guys. Funny. Ernie kind of runs the show. He actually writes scripts everything mm-hmm. and writes everything down. The organization, the guy who kind of controls the conversation. So that would they everyone said that that seemed to be Doug the most. Kenny 
is the one always coming up with like analytics and numbers and like mm. being that and being uh he talks he speaks in certainties like Sal does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I can see that. Charles is probably the loudest and opinionated and talks, you know, just right. off the handle all the time and stirs a lot of shit. Yeah. And then Shaq, you know, just says the least but then has these witty just throws comments. Throws in yeah. some funny shit. Yeah, yeah so I, yeah, I can see that. But but anyways, my point of bringing them up is that you know, I really think the fitness industry needs that. I really think that we're trying to to fill that void of a place where every normal person that's just wants to be healthier and wants to be a better version of themselves can tune in and be entertained and educated at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you get that kind of formula from something like like the group of guys up there. Like they're if you're really into basketball, you love their conversation because they debate a lot of good topics and they're they're all very intelligent men that have been in the sport for a very long time, but they do this, they do it in a very unique way that we never really saw, I think 20, 30 years ago, and it makes for great TV because it's entertaining as fuck. Even if you're not a basketball fan, you, li- listening to their conversation on TV is hilarious and it's enjoyable. And I think that we don't have that. I think the fitness industry is so fucking stuffy. It's either super broed out. Super egos. Right. It's, it's either super broed out and fake and bad information and like superficial on one side. And then it's super nerdy, yeah. boring as fuck fucking. Like infra- I read about what you're doing and you're wrong. Right. It's yeah. like it, there. It's there's. A, and I really want us to represent. And I believe that we're working our way there. We're not that huge to where everybody in fitness knows who Mind Pump is. I hope one day it becomes that we become one of the main places that we traffic people through, but that it's a reliable source of information that you know that it ain't going to be fucking bullshit. You know that it's going to be a credible source because we vetted it first. Meanwhile, you can be entertained and and, and learn and at the same time have a good time. Like that's, mm. I feel like the industry this industry lacks that, you and know, it the, needs yeah. it. And the irony is, of all of this, what a is, lot of self promotion. there. What is needed, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. It's a lot of what is ABC. needed or lacking in the fitness industry is is really controlled by the consumers. So that's the irony of all this. Like, if you want more of something and right, you want so less true. of something else, I'll give you something else that Stop I stop liking and sharing. That's it. Right? it. Here, here's one thing I can't stand in the fitness industry. I can't stand it to the point where I don't think any of us can stand it. We have yet to do it, but we continue to get pushed to do it. And that's before and after pictures. Can't stand them. Cannot stand before and after pictures because you will not find one that's not doctored. Mm. You will not find one that represents the average person. Uh, Many of them are not just doctored, but they're complete bullshit. And it's this it's a shitty way of selling yeah. something like, hey, take my new pill because look at this guy who lost fifty pounds and now has a tan and a six pack. I fucking hate it so much. We have yet to do like before and after ads. This is but so superficial. We keep getting hammered by marketing teams who are like, you guys need to put some before and after. And we have them. We have yeah, before and afters. Yeah, I have yeah. lots of people who send us messages. Well, we even get it from consumers too. Consumers want to see. That's right. And that's it. That's just it. That's like, what makes it tough. It's right. It's like in order for us to get our message out, we yeah. got to give consumers what they want. Otherwise, we don't have an audience. Right. So a lot of what is needed and what is lacking, we control. So if you don't like the bullshit, if you don't like the flash in the pan, if you don't like the terrible message, stop liking, stop sharing, stop yeah. giving them attention. They, If you don't pay attention to them, they dry out and disappear. And what you pay attention to is what we get more of. So give that attention to things that you think are are setting up and doing the right thing, and then you'll start to you'll see the industry change overnight. If everybody went that direction today collectively, which never would happen, but let's just say that happened, yeah. you would see the industry scramble and change overnight. Websites would change overnight. Information would be presented overnight. So it's it is in our power yeah, to move pro- in that direction. Problem is, I think everybody has this. Uh, whether it be subconscious or they actively know that they have this desire for drama and bullshit and all is we like crap. It's weird. Yeah. It's, I, it, it's almost like it's built into people where we want to, we want to see still, you still want to see, you still want to watch, you still want to be entertained by, even if you know it's bullshit, even though if you don't subscribe to it, there's still this, this, this thing that makes people want it. To, uh, yeah, you know? it's almost like, uh, will it ever not exist? What's that show, Celebrity Rehab? It would be like, it would be like a legit like rehab 
a doctor or somebody that's like managing somebody to success and like doing all the right steps and all the right things. And then that show comes out, but everybody knows well, how many, rehab just being that. How many people have you guys heard talk shit about trash TV, soap yeah. operas and MTV fucking shows and complain about it? Okay. Or a perfect example. You guys were a part, we were part of the, of MTV when it started. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was in our generation. Mm -hmm. So I watched it a lot as a kid. My biggest complaint with it is that it's no longer music videos. It used to be as a kid. I know. I enjoyed music videos. I what love, the hell? I love music and I love music videos and I love that every day I could come home from school, I could turn on MTV and I could see the latest songs being played. It's completely changed. Why? Because consumers are loving the trash, the fucking yeah. real how, world. How all funny, that fucking bullshit. How funny is it that? Because I remember going through this, and I'm more aware now as an adult. But I remember th getting pissed off at brands and companies for not giving me what I fucking want, not realizing that there's not enough of me. It's everybody <laughs> else. You know? right. Apparently, right. I'm not like the majority. Yeah, like fuck yeah. MTV. You guys even play music anymore. Yeah. You, you fucking stupid right. company. Just because they're not giving me right. what and I that, want. Yeah. And, and you get angry about it, but it's it's not a bad business move. And they're way smarter than you think you than you yeah, are. They're, you know, they're going to shift on, on they're, the, on the they're following where the trends are, where everybody is subscribing to. Like, yeah, if, the, if, ref, the, ref, the, the market is just simply a reflection of society. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. Like, if you don't want liquor stores on every corner, corner of your neighborhood your people in your neighborhood need to stop buying alcohol if yeah. you don't want the fitness industry to put out like shit and bullshit and fake stuff then we just need to stop buying yes stop following those people that's it All right next up is lorna grace fitness i'm working with a client who's lean with low muscle mass and who primarily needs to improve her very weak immune system would you recommend a strength or hypertrophy based program initially this is a good question because, uh, I, you know, as, as Doug's reading this, I'm thinking to myself, well, first off, I would recommend correctional exercise to start with. So neither pure strength or pure hypertrophy. It would be all correctional exercise because you're talking about someone with low muscle mass, someone who's very who's got a weak immune system. I would go correctional exercise. But mm. let's say you've finished that part. Now you've given them some stability. You've given them some, you know, kind of a solid foundation. Would I recommend you go into a pure strength training course? Probably not because I think they would need to continue to build more control yeah. in the 8 this to 12 rep this range. A, this is a perfect candidate CNS for what we strength. just talked about, for the maps anywhere. Yeah. We just we just, we just discussed two questions ago, body weight training. What a great candidate. Oh, yeah. What a great candidate to, to start them first off of that before – because they're gonna build, they're gonna build some strength. They're gonna build some muscle by oh, doing. We threw in some unique, like tension-based exercises where I'm, I'm really trying to ramp up that CNS response. And like, I know a lot of programs out there don't even address that. And so, what does that even mean? Well, you know, there's ways to to build strength and in, in the communication chain and and get even more response, more recruitment, which then will, that's like one foundational layer to then bring load into the mix. So now we bring load into the mix and all, everything's stabilized. Everything is working at its highest capacity. Right. Yeah, I think um, because on one hand, you can make the argument, well, you want to focus on maximal strength before you move into hypertrophy because it's going to, yeah, but it's not going to tax her body as much yeah. and all that stuff. But here's the problem. I would not trust a client like this with maximal loads. No, no. When I when I see when I hear Less low damaging. low muscle mass and weak immune system right away, I, caution. Like yeah, the caution right. flags go up for me. That sure maybe, and I don't know this person. And this is where recovery you know, is going to be tough. You as a trainer, you have to have the awareness to like, you know, I don't. Is this person sixty eight years old? You know, is this person thirty five? And we're just saying that they have kind of a weak immune system and not a lot of muscle mass. And by by. Uh, low muscle lean ma uh, muscle mass is that person like a twig like a hundred mm -hmm. pounds or they you know you just think they're they're skinnier completely lean compared, right so there a lot there's a lot of variables that come in here to make that would make i would always and as a trainer i would always caution on the uh, less risk side first and then progress them that way yeah. so for a, a body body strength body weight type of a program to start them off and see how they start to respond addressing diet stuff getting into tension type movements like in maps anywhere like justin was saying and then like a, a, asking yourself as a trainer like does this person can they start doing a loaded barbell and you know and then maybe you then you transition them eventually into a yeah. maps red pre-phase and then a maps red regular and then from there you know yeah because as when i took a big if i took a beginner on um it always it usually starts like this 
correctional exercise. Then we're going into kind of a traditional hypertrophy type of range where I'm looking at anywhere between eight to you know twelve repetitions. And then I go strength. It's, so it'd be like this: it would be prime anywhere red, complete, hundred you know, percent prime 100%. anywhere red. That's I mean, yeah. that's how th- this is why we created all these programs. If you're a trainer, yeah, if you're listening right now. Right there. And you're a trainer, like, and you haven't invested in all the programs. Like, I would invest in it even if I didn't use it. I'd use it as an educational tool for myself to better program. That's why we created it. We really created all these programs to provide resources, not just for the masses, but also for the professional who could be dealing with. I would love to have all those options, right? Because then again, you get somebody with very like distinctive, you know, like variables coming in that you're like, oh wow, it'll match best with this. Mm -hmm. But now I can draw up, you know, a pretty long program based off of like the programs we've already created. So now with a weak immune system, uh, food and sleep play massive roles in that also. But you're not asking about that. You're asking about just exercise. So, but I do want to say that like. You could do great with your workouts, but if sleep as food is off, the immune system's gonna have, it's no, gonna have a tough time. That's another great point. Like yeah. I'd also be wanting to know why their their immune system is weak and maybe What do they is, mean by weak? Right. And does that mean they have like a really mm. high stress job and so they they deal with stress seven days a week? And so, you know, definitely a heavy barbell or a barbell type of lifting routine at first would probably not be ideal for this person. Maybe we're doing more mobility yoga type work with a little bit of body work in there. You know, so and really, e- really exercise, tough to be precise without knowing exactly. And exercise does strengthen the immune system when done properly. When done improperly, it will do the opposite. If you train somebody too hard with the wrong movements, you will depress an immune system. Now, all exercise, all exercise temporarily causes a slight depression in the immune system, all of them. So if you go into the gym and you're working out and you're fighting something – the odds that whatever you're fighting is going to win uh, go up uh, quite a bit. The strengthening doesn't come from the actual workout itself. The strengthening of the immune system comes from after that ad- adaptation process. And I, I just want to be clear because I've heard way too many people tell me this bullshit where, oh, you know, I've got a cold. Maybe I should go to the gym and run it off, go on the treadmill and, or whatever and sweat it out or go lift because I think that'll make my, my cold go away. No, it doesn't work that way. Hmm. You're going to go in there and stress your body, which then takes resources and takes energy from your body away from fighting whatever you have and putting it towards trying to recover from muscle damage and all that other stuff. That also doesn't mean, though, you sit you know, sit in a dark room and don't move at all. Movement's okay. You know, Go outside, get some sunlight and stuff like that. But definitely, if you're talking about a weak immune system, exercise is one component, and it's not even as important as sleep um, and nutrition. Sleep and nutrition are actually more important in this regard. So get those in check and then add the uh, proper exercise and then you'll see them improve. Uh, Check this out. If you go to YouTube, our channel is Mind Pump TV, totally different content than the podcast, lots of new videos. Right now at the moment, we are posting a 30-day workout. So every day it's a new workout. Sometimes it's mobility, sometimes it's uh, stuff in the gym, but it's something different every day and it progresses the whole 30 days. So the workout at the end is far more difficult than what you started with. It's a great way to get started into fitness and it's free. It's on our YouTube channel. Go to Mind Pump TV, subscribe, set up your notifications so you get notified every time we post a new video. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.